Alrighty, how's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we're heading into the off season to start season two. So if you guys want to continue to see more of this zero overall franchise, make sure you hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you are new and enjoyed the content. And as always, leave some comments. Let me know what you guys think of the series. Let me know what you guys think we could change to make this series even better. And also some other ideas throughout, um, as well as what you guys like, what you guys don't like, who your favorite player is, and so on and so forth. So if you missed last episode, up above in the right hand corner is going to get you caught up on what happened. On season one finale, we had a one run game heading into the ninth. And it was, oh man, it was, it was, a, it was a heartbreaker, but it definitely was a really, really good game. So hopping into the off season for season, to get ready for season two, we do come on, you know, we do come into a bit of an issue. And if you guys missed it on Twitter, link is down in the description below. I always have my Twitter link. I tweeted out that we, we, we have a huge problem. Almost every single player retires at the end of the first season. You guys can see um, there's, I mean, it's basically almost everybody because of their ability, because they're low rated. So what we're going to have to, or what I'm going to have to do is in free agency, um, we, we're going to have to basically sign a bunch of really, really, really bad players to fill up the roster. But also in the our current farm system, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, all these players here and I'm going to recreate everybody so that we can keep the same players and just make, you know, keep season two, keep this franchise going. And that's basically what's going to have to happen because I don't want to lose everybody after one season. I want to keep this series going. I want to keep, you know, the same players kind of keep, you know, everything the same. And I don't just want to completely change it after season one. So for season two. This is what I'm going to have to do. I'm just going to have to sign a bunch of really, really, really bad players to fill the roster up. And then I'm going to have to recreate the players with the current players that we have in our farm system. That way we can, you know, keep Truman Bartholomew. We can keep Maverick, Moss, Pepito, Americo, so on and so forth. So that's what I'm going to have to do. So the next time you see the team, we're going to be going over um, the upgrades. And we're going to have everyone back on the roster along with talking about those new draft picks that we had. So next time we cut to a scene. We'll be talking about the new roster. Alrighty, so we have gotten everyone as close to um, like what they looked like as possible. We have um, updated all the attributes based on their progress or their performance in the first season. And um, the team's looking decent. I had to make a couple cuts on the team just because with the new addition of the draft picks from season one... Um, we were our our uh, 25 man roster was full, and putting them in the farm system really wasn't going to help us out. And you're going to see why I dropped the players that I did anyways. It makes a lot of sense why I dropped the ones that I did, and I kept um, the ones that I ended up keeping. So let's let's look at the team as a whole. As you guys can see, this is our starting rotation. Truman Bartholomew is now a 16 overall, um, based on his strikeouts and his innings pitch he got a, a little bit of a boost nothing too crazy but definitely a little bit of a boost you guys can see the fielding arm strength arm accuracy and arm uh, and reactions are all at 50 i decided that to put him at 50 for every single player would be the best um solution i feel like there really isn't an easy way to come up with a fielding boost for an attribute so putting everybody at 50 is a, a, a decent overall but it's not one where they're not going to be like or where they're going to be like a, a gold glove every season so a 50 i thought was like a good little area it's right in the middle they're not going to be a gold glover every season but they definitely aren't going to screw us over um especially in the catching position that was like the big one and then on um you can see the hitting stats i put everyone's durability up to 99 and then their, their fielding is still a 50. But you can see Truman Bartholomew, Bartholomew is now a 16 overall. Ray Almanzar was a player that we drafted last season. He only has C potential, but he is our best starting pitcher now. He's got good velocity, decent stamina. So he is going to be a pitcher, a starting pitcher who's going to be able to eat up some innings, which was a big issue that we had last season. And overall, you know, for a starting pitcher who's in his first season, definitely not horrible stats poncio alvarez is making a return decent decent stats um stat upgrade from the previous season and again he's got 50 across the board for fielding um 
Ke Carlos Kike, another one of the players who basically similar stat upgrade. He's about he's at a 30, uh, not 30. He's at a 13 overall. And Kip Aiden is gonna be making the comeback as well with a similar stat overall boost. The starting pitcher who got the cut was Abraham Milton, mostly because this season he would have been 35. So there was really no point in keeping an older pitcher around when we could just keep these younger guys. Um, and I think he was one of the ones that had the lowest innings pitched anyways. So I figured why not keep the players who had the highest uh, innings pitched for starters. And that way they would get a little bit better of a boost anyways. So heading into the bullpen, you guys can see here, Darby Jarvis is making a return. He is at a 20 overall, mostly because his stamina is a little bit higher. And he, because he pitched more innings as well as he had more strikeouts. So he got a decent little boost in the per nine stats. Um, which are looking nice. Christopher Robles is one of our better rated pitching prospects. B potential, 64 overall, 21 years old. Got good walks per nine, decent hits per nine. Um, velocity looks okay. Um, not not a bad looking pitcher to um, have in the bullpen after you know how bad our pitching was last year. Adam Malachi is another player who's making a return. He didn't get as good of a boost. And I decided to keep him around compared to the other three pitchers that I did make a cut in the bullpen who were Egbert Dillon, um, Alfredo Derrick, and Ace Bruno. I got rid of those three pitchers mostly because they were near 200 innings pitched. And I felt like giving them a huge stamina boost would be a little bit unfair. And um, they were also some of the older pitchers that we had anyways. So having uh, high strikeouts, high innings pitched, and them being kind of the older ones, I felt like it wasn't fair to have them have really good stamina really good k's per nine boost and i think it would just kind of take away from them actually being relievers rather than um having our starters really bad stamina and our relievers have really good stamina so that's kind of why i kept these pitchers anyways adam malachi also grew out his hair he now has dreads troy lee was another pitcher that we drafted and to be honest he's he looks a little bit better than uh christopher robles but you know his k's per nine are a little bit higher like more consistent uh his velocity is decent he's got really good break i like that his fielding's pretty poor so i'm hoping he doesn't have any comebackers or anything but he's got a fastball a change up and a fork um i'd even look at christopher robles pitches he's got a sweeping curve a change up a four seam and a slider and then our other new pitcher real manzar has a splitter slider curve two seam and four seam so a decent little pitch selection there a uh, next reliever is freddie hippolito he got a decent little upgrade as well now a 23 overall um and again a 50 fielding dario lenard is still at the club as well a decent little upgrade for him he's a 19 overall richard humphrey another player that we drafted decent hits per nine that's the big stat that stands out for me he's he's got a four seam a change up a 12 uh six curveball and a splitter so again a decent little pitch selection there so you guys can see we added a decent amount of pitchers this year and i definitely like um those those picks that we had they're, they're really going to help us out this year next up was the closer at a belter at a bear adal berto gonzalez from brazil we had them last year He's got a decent little upgrade as well. Um, one of the lower upgrades that we he you know that our relievers got, but he was our closer, so he didn't really pitch that many innings. I think he only pitched about 60, maybe. Um, but he had a decent amount of strikeouts, and his Ks and walks and hit, uh, home runs per nine stat was actually really high um, by the end of the year. So that's that is our starting rotation and our bullpen. It's looking a lot better than it was last year, and I'm I'm actually feeling a little bit more confident than what we had um, the season before the big upgrade boost was Victor Victor Mesa he is actually looking like a really good player you know good contact numbers decent power numbers um, the fielding and the speed I left the same but the hitting stats I did give a little bit boost um, based on what he did last season Pepe, Pepito Americo the right fielder um, Again, like I said, durability is a 99 and fielding was at a 50 flat um, for every single player. But okay stats, you know, good, co decent contact numbers now. And I say decent very loosely um, because he only got, you know, a 12 and a 13. Um, he did get a little bit of a speed up, not an upgrade, but he did grow to speed throughout the season. So that's that's decent. Kevin Page is the catcher that we drafted with a potential who can also play third base. He's got really good hitting stats, decent fielding stats. Um, 
decent speed as well but i definitely think this guy is going to be very good for us um he's gonna help us out with the catching um fielding wise he's not as good as say you know thick boy arnold kelly who looks like he's actually put on more weight he looks massive now but um i think he'll definitely be able to you know he'll get us some runs and he'll definitely be an upgrade compared to arnold kelly sean robles is a, a third baseman that we drafted from cuba he looks decent as well really good power um good arm strength and arm accuracy as well as um just his power is a really big standout stat here i think he's going to be a really good player i am going to use him for right now as a dh slash bench off the bat or you know bench off the bat what am i talking about a bat off the bench because i think he's going to be a really good player to utilize whenever we need a key hit also i don't want to just throw him into the majors right away i kind of want to slowly um, um ease him in if i think we need to completely change what i'm like talking about then i'll definitely throw him into the lineup and make him an everyday player rain rodney is now a 31 overall you can see his hitting stats got decent and he was one of the players who actually did get a speed uh, upgrade. Clyde Niles didn't get a speed upgrade, but he did get a lot of hits throughout the year. I think he was the second most um, on the team. So that's why he got a pretty big contact uh, boost um, after this year. Maverick Moss was another one of those players that got a big uh, boost. He had a, a speed boost as well as a contact boost. So he's actually pretty highly rated as well. Yancey Esmond was another player who got a lot of hits so you can see his boosts there danilo prince is one of those players who's who he he did get a good amount of hits you guys can see the stats and as well as he actually grew pretty quickly um for some of his hits so that's or his hit stats so that's why some of these players actually have high rated contact numbers as well so um danilo prince is one of those players who's on the fringe of being Put onto the bench just because we do have Sean Robles now. Um, Chris Montague is a player who, again, he got a, a speed boost even though he was kind of a bench bat, which was pretty cool to see. I think like one out of every three hits that he had was a extra base hit, which is pretty crazy to see. Stuart Merrill was actually a third baseman when we drafted him, but because we don't have a backup first baseman, I decided to have move him to first base and then he can also play third as well but he's a very good like a very well-rounded uh hitter to start with at the age of 19 decent speed as well so i'm thinking he's definitely a good um player off the bench to be as our uh our pinch runner you know 69 speed isn't the fastest but it definitely is a lot better than what we have so i think he's going to be our pinch runner and then we have captain thick arnold kelly who a little bit of power a little bit of contact um but you know i he just looks like he's gained so much weight i don't know what's going on with him so we are missing a couple players from the, the actual team Jax, ambrose sunny boniface and braxton lawson those three were just you know they were cut because we did draft two infielders um so that's why uh sunny boniface was cut and then we had um Jax ambrose cut just because i felt like we didn't really need another outfielder we could always make one of our bench players play outfield and then the catcher because we did drafted kevin page i felt that we should keep arnold kelly just because you know he's captain thick he's kind of like an icon now and then braxton lawson even though he was a decent catcher i feel like since we now have kevin page who i think is going to be an absolute stud i'd rather use him and then let captain thick ride the bench so that's the team as a whole um we can quickly look to see if any other teams have made some really big changes to their squads other than that that's really the end of this episode so let's quickly see if there's any changes you guys can see the braves um jose martinez from the cardinals is an addition um they do have josh donaldson but uh other than that you know it's not not too too many changes the astros here looks pretty similar to previous years the rangers um, added Justin S Smoke and Scott Shevler. Let's see who else. The Mariners look pretty similar. They did add Solarte. Um, Raul Mondesi is on the A's. But other than that, not too many changes. Oh, Tyler Flowers as well. Um, Mike Moustakas is now at the Angels. And the Twins look similar besides Defoe, Jankowski. Oh, Todd Frazier as well. So they've made a couple different changes there. Um, 
the Kansas City Royals looks pretty similar. Andrew Velasquez is the name that I don't really recognize. JT Real Muto is at the Tigers now, along with Pat Vileka and Jake Marisnik. Um, the Indians, McCutcheon, Eduardo Escobar, Matt Adams are some new names there. The White Sox look um, pretty similar. The Blue Jays look pretty similar, minus the cha Oh, they actually did add Starlin Castro at second. The Rays, uh, no changes there, it looks like, besides Steven Vogt behind the dish. The Yankees are similar. Jed Lowry's a new addition there. We got the Red Sox with Jose Abreu at first, as well as uh, no other changes, it looks like. Orioles are still... Oh, they added Bryce Harper. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. The Orioles making moves, adding Bryce Harper. Um, any other big name moves that I can notice? It doesn't it doesn't look like it. Um, looks Nick Castellanos is at the Rockies. Paul Goldschmidt is still at the Diamondbacks here. Tulowitzki moved to Arizona as well. The Yank or not the Yankees, the Cardinals look pretty similar the Pirates have a pretty similar lineup as well um, same with the Brewers minus oh they did add Nomar Mazzara um, and the Reds look oh, they okay they made us a, a move as well adding Manny Machado um, the Cubs look pretty similar as well as the Phillies yeah that's that's the same the Mets look pretty similar as well and then the Nationals minus Bryce Harper. So not too many crazy big name moves, but definitely some moves were made. Uh, Machado to the Reds and then Harper to the Orioles. Pretty crazy to see that. Um, obviously, there were some pitching changes to other teams as well, but it's, it's pretty inter interesting to see what other moves have been made throughout the season. So that's really going to round up this episode. I wanted it to be a recap slash roster update so you guys can see how season two is looking as well as um, how, you know, maybe give me some predictions on how you think the season's going to go. Once again, we are on Hall of Fame difficulty. I did drop it down. Actually, I think I might have changed. All-Star. Hall of Fame was killing us. So we decided to go to All-Star just to see just to make games a little bit closer because we almost we almost almost beat the Blue Jays so it was so close so I definitely think this season is a season that we um, we get a win so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you were new and enjoyed the content and let me know some um, some predictions for this season who you think is gonna be a star who do you think is gonna be an absolute bust and um, any other changes you think we should make to the series just to kind of keep it fresh and everything like that. Season two is definitely going to be longer than season one. It's going to be a lot more involved in depth. Um, season one was just trying to get through it so that we could get these upgrades started and we get these changes to the team. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.